Power Moves with Dr. Gladney, the show that the world has been waiting for. Dr. Gladney is the world-renowned emotional wellness expert, CEO of 24 Karat Speakers, author, and power mover. Each episode will feature extraordinary guests who've created success by making moves that led them to their power. Put on your seatbelt and get ready for the ride of your life as you are inspired and motivated to move to your greatness. This is Dr. Gladney, Dr. G, and we are coming to you with another episode of Power Moves with Dr. Gladney. Yes, it's all about the moves that you make in your life that bring you that power. This show is going to motivate and move you to your greatness. So I am so excited. As I've told you, I made a move when I stepped outside and decided I wasn't gonna teach anymore and started my own business and became the emotional wellness doctor that helps people stay sane in this crazy world. And you all know how crazy this world is. As well as another power move that I made, launched a speakers agency called 24 Karat Speakers for premium speakers who are women of color. So those are just a little bit about my power moves. What are yours? But you know, each and every episode, we come to you with a powerful person who has made some powerful moves in their lives that they can share their story and help you. Go on, we gonna move you to your greatness. Today, I'm excited to have our guest, my friend, the powerful Dr. Renee Fowler Hornbuckle. Welcome to the show, my friend and 24 karat speaker. Oh yes, I'm excited just hearing <laughs> you. Hey, Dr. G, what's going on? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so for having me. It's so good to me. see you and I'm just loving that pink. Okay. It matches the power pink chair. It does power pink, I like that. <laughs> yes. So we've come ready power today pink. to make some power moves apparently. We are ready. When I tell you there's so much mm -hmm. that I could say, you know, your bio continues to go <laughs> and go and go. For all of the things that you've done, the nonprofits that you have, I think it's about three. Correct. Look, look, I do my homework. <laughs> it's three. And then you have some for profit mm -hmm. businesses. Absolutely. But you're also a pastor. Yes. Listen, that's <laughs> one of those jobs that I, by the way, my sister and my brother in law are co pastors, and I had another brother in law who's a pastor. And I always said, you could not pay me enough money <laughs> to be a pastor. <laughs> well, people look at me and say, but you know, you taking in people's problems all day, exactly. but y'all are in a whole different way. Exactly. Y'all, you do it in the name of ministry. <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. But let me tell you what keeps me sane in a crazy world. I actually aspired to be a psychiatrist. Oh, wow. That was my goal. Okay. And so I've always had a heart and a love for helping people, for looking at people and extracting their potential, for pushing them when they didn't want to be pushed, because I felt that they needed to just be healthy and whole and driven, and surely they could wow. get to that place of purpose. So being a psychiatrist, which I didn't become, yes. you know, has redirected me into a space where I still get that same opportunity to yes. help people and then refer. Right. Yeah, refer, well, but refer, you know refer. what? You really kind of still are a psychiatrist because you diagnose those <laughs> parishioners. Yes, yes. And I am certified. I have you, taken classes, yes. so I am qualified yeah, you, to be able to listen, make the assessment you, and to do the pastoral care counseling. Yes. And then also, if needed, to refer. So right. it, it really is the best of both worlds. Wow. Well, you know what? Tell us a little bit more about... I, I named off a lot of stuff. You got books for days <laughs> and you got courses. Yeah. You have really made a lot of power moves. So tell the audience a little bit more about all of the stuff that you do and who you are. Well, as I indicated, you know, I had different goals and aspirations, you know, coming out of high school. I'm from Arkansas, wanted to leave that small. Okay 
okay. city, town, state, you know, <laughs> on to bigger things. So right. Texas was like a big move to Texas, me, right? Big state. <laughs> but I, I landed here and uh, things just weren't going well in life. Okay. And I had to figure it out. And I truly believe I really peg myself as being the transformationalist where I truly am able to help people be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Okay. And so everything that I've gone through in my life, I feel has led me to this place. Every corporate experience, every entrepreneurial experience, successes, failures, it all adds up and it works. And I look at it this way, I put it in a bowl, right? And it all works for good. And wow. so that's what I try to help people to understand. So I'm the baby of five girls. Oh, wow. And my, I was supposed to be a boy. Uh, I was a tomboy. <laughs> and so okay. I'm, I'm girly girl now. Okay? <laughs> but I was a tomboy. But, you know, I tell people that story because my father had five girls and his wow. wife in the household. Mm -mm. And I believe I Poor benefited. Man. I know. He was a great man. <laughs> I believe I benefited from having him impart into me that, strength, okay. that tenacity, that typically we consider men to have, mm. but also women can have it. And so I benefited from not having any brothers where my dad would say, no, you're going to have to step up and do this. You're going to oh, have okay. to have the know-how. And so I think I think a little differently, and I'm going to come back to that in a okay, moment. Okay. I think I think a little <laughs> differently. I've always been pushed in my life to think differently. And if people could reframe their thoughts, if they could begin to think differently, Absolutely. as I tell people all the time, think about what you think about. I think it can change the trajectory of your life. And so bottom line, you know, Arkansas girl, went to college, matriculated through the higher education. Okay. You know, path didn't go the way that I thought it was going. Ended up saying, I got to use this for good. Chose another path. Thought I was going to be a big CEO in corporate America. Okay. And right as I was climbing the ladder, I got married and uh, <laughs> things took a different path. Then I had children. That's a whole nother conversation. Oh, and yes. things just turned. But it's each turn, it is so vitally necessary to assess where you are mm -hmm. and say to yourself, you know, how did I end up here? Why am I here? And what can I do in this space that I'm in? And if people can learn how to maneuver through life in that capacity, instead of having a pity party, whining, right, right. or even having, you know, a breakdown. I've been close to having breakdowns yes, before, yeah. absolutely, because yeah, I thought, too. oh my yeah. God, yeah. things didn't go the way that I thought. But if people could just get the tools that they need and reframe their thoughts, then they can get to a greater place. So everything that I've used in my life has led me here, everything. So, you know, this is really important. When we talk to women about power moves, we always have to mention, because yes, our lives don't get to move really like we want them to move. Mm -hmm. When you do take on the husband, and you have children. Absolutely. In fact, they, they recategorize you. <laughs> they <right>? rearrange <laughs> your life they for do. you. I returned back <laughs> from my first maternity leave to an article on my desk that said, you're now on the mommy track. What will you do? Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and really, you know, it's, it is. And that, listen, that's a whole nother show that I need to just talk about power moves with with moms because mm -hmm. with moms because you know it does change your trajectory it changes mm -hmm. you know even how you view the world Absolutely. and what you think about yeah. and and yeah. and if you say okay this is what i want to do this is important so you had a lot of different movements mm -hmm. how do you end up having three nonprofits <laughs> two for profits pastoring a church how do you do all of that well there's a little bit of a backstory to all of that when I came into ministry full time, I was very dissatisfied okay. and it was very challenging. In fact, I, I lost myself in that process because if I've been trained for one thing and now yes. all of a sudden yeah. there's a shift, you know, how do I position myself to where I find that fulfillment? Right. And honestly, being at home with my three children, I thought, wait a minute. I don't know if this is really for me <laughs> yeah. full time. Okay. Oh, I, I, I love my children, oh, right? <laughs> me too. I know. It's like, what? Yeah. listen, yeah. Yeah. I was called to do something. Else. Right, right, right. Like, like they go to school. Yes, I yes, do something. Yes, we yes. meet. Okay. So 
there, there, there's a, a lot of layers there, but, but just kind of fast forwarding, because I know we have limited time. Um, my ex-husband and I built an incredible ministry and life took on a life of its own and we just were catapulted into the public eye. Mm. And no sooner than we were in that public eye, it all fell apart based on his choices, his <sighs> actions. And I found myself in the place having lost my ministry, my marriage, my marketplace businesses, members, uh, but I didn't lose my mind. Wow. You're okay. And so, wait. <laughs> <laughs> your ministry, your marriage, mm -hmm. your marketplace, was it another M? I, I don't know if you know, you named a, a bunch of M's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you did not lose my mind. Your mind. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna ask you about that later. Okay. But anyway, I just yeah. had to, yeah. I, I wanted to impress that upon people. Mm -hmm. All of the things mm -hmm. that you had built up. Mm -hmm. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Now, what's interesting about this is that by all of appearances, I still had it all together. I still had wow. all of that intact, but I didn't. See, I was one who had to reframe and rethink my entire life. And I had to learn yeah. how to use systems that I had never used before. For example, to maintain my assets and property, I had to utilize bankruptcy. Oh, wow. Something that typically yes. we're ashamed that, of. Right, and you don't, yeah, absolutely. Right. And so now here I am a single mother. Mm. and I don't have access to child support or alimony. Right. I had to rethink my financial future. My businesses were gone. Mm. Uh, my engagements had stopped. I had to reframe and rethink all of that. Absolutely. And so I grabbed hold of the things, my faith, and thought, if I have faith, I can believe that all things are possible. Wow. I can move forward. I also grabbed hold of my whives, my children. Yes. If I fall apart, they're they falling fall apart. apart. Absolutely. And their future is not predicated upon someone's actions. Yes. God has a totally separate right. future for them. And that's what I leaned into. The love around me, wow. was it easy? No. There were challenges on every side. And that's why we have to honestly think about what we think about and make certain that we're in a position to where we can have the right resources right. around us so that we can make the right choices. Absolutely. So that we can maneuver through troubles, trauma, calamity that come our way. Wow. That's usually where people lose it. They get paralyzed. There were days yes. it was really hard. It was tough. But right in the midst of that, I would find a glimmer of hope. Mm. Right in the midst of that, I could see that there was gonna be some good that might come out of this. And even though people walked away, I still had to forgive, I had to release, I had to Ooh, let go. That's a lot. It that took work. Right it takes W-O-R-K. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, this is, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. And some people, their lives seem to be easier. Mm -hmm. We don't know why different people have different crosses to bear, so, you, right. so to speak, or why the challenges for somebody is great and other people is small. Mm -hmm. The question is, when did you realize your greatness? You know, that is a wonderful question that we all need to process. I think we know it from a very early age, mm -hmm. but I don't think we're given permission to mm. acknowledge okay. the greatness that's on the inside of us. So to respond to that correctly, yes. I think I knew it probably from the time that I refereed my first little situation on the playground, that there was something unique and different about me, that there was a gift, okay. there was an ability that I had to be able to calm people, to set people on the right course and to bring them together, okay. to bring their healing. Like, why are you not getting along with that person? Why do you not like oh, that person? Wow. That doesn't make sense. So I acknowledged it at a very early age. I encourage parents to look at their children individually mm -hmm, and to really acknowledge the gifting in them because the person that talks a lot may not be that one that just is always having to say nothing. They may be the person yes. that really we need to listen to and hear what they're saying or the active child. Yes, you know, yes. we put them in a corner and say, be still when they're really a creative. 
And so for me as a child, I knew I wanted to do something great. I would tell my parents I was gonna do great things, <laughs> yeah. but they didn't know how to nurture that. No. And so what they say, go to school, get an education, go to work for somebody. Yes, yes. And so for me, I've always felt my entire life like I was in a box and I wanted to be mm. outside of that box and do unusual things. So this drive that I have for transformation and wanting to be a blessing to others, I say I'm passionate about empowerment. Okay. I didn't even know how to frame it for a lot of years. Right. Even in corporate America, right. yes. I still would find myself being the one that was taking the extra time mentoring and coaching and guiding oh, wow. Wow. when we were not even using those terms, you know, because I feel that there's that opportunity to help lift someone. Yes. And so that greatness started early. I just wish somebody had refined it so that I would have learned a long time ago yes. what I know now. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing that you say that because a lot of times it takes people until they have an epiphany or something mm -hmm. later on in life. Yeah. And then they're realizing, um, especially when you've made power moves and you've mm -hmm. done things and you've accumulated quite a bit. When I say accumulated, it's not, we're not talking just about materialistic things. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about the things that you've done and you've accumulated quite a resume. What would you say was that one move that put you on a different trajectory and it was what you could call your power move? I think my biggest and first power move came when I stepped into the arena of entrepreneurship. Wow. Look, when you said the arena, immediately <laughs> I thought of this boxing, <laughs> boxing uh, arena and that's really what it is when you it is yeah. when you're in entrepreneurship. Yeah, no, you it is. Are <laughs> you're a boxing, a every boxing day. match. But go yeah. ahead. So, well, it 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 taught me certain disciplines. It it taught me I, my expectation was I bought into a franchise. My expectation was, oh, this is going to be easy. They've got it all they got the a cookie out. They got a cookie cutter, <laughs> and I stepped into it, and I realized that if I don't show up, nobody is. If I wow. don't manage this. Nobody is. So that really helped to change everything that I did. Corporate was one experience. That taught me how to lay the foundation, build the infrastructure. Now I'm stepping into another aspect of there's this cookie cutter that's given yes, yeah. to me and I'm thinking, oh, it's easy to do. But everything is gonna require sweat equity. Absolutely. Everything that we do, Absolutely. if we want to be successful, it's going to require that we truly be fully present and engaged. And overall, I think that that's what that taught me. So any move that I make, I always consider and count the cost of what right. it is that I'm doing because I learned that. And I hear a lot of young people say, oh, I want to leave my job. And they don't recognize, don't you know what, that nine to five might be real good for you right now because <laughs> it provides the structure, the Absolutely. training, the development, Absolutely. the learning that you need now. Because when you're the boss, if the it's, business is going to be yeah. successful, it's you got to show up. 14 hours, yeah. one day. 14 <laughs> hours, what about look, 20 hours? No, <laughs> look, if there's eight hours you complaining about. Right. You know, you said a lot about s losing some things, the M's, the marriage, the ministry. Members. The members. Marketplace. The marketplace. But you didn't lose your mind. When we come back, I want to know, how do you maintain your emotional wellness? In just a few seconds, we're going to find out what her secret is. 24 Karat Speakers is an elite speakers agency that represents women of color. Our agency offers boutique services to our buyers and speakers that include powerful speakers, training, product development, and client management. Our world-class speakers are experts in content and messaging and are uniquely trained to motivate audiences and excite the brain for impactful learning. Colorful women, powerful messages, changing the world. To hire one of these amazing women, go to www.24caratspeakers.com and let us help you create your world-class event. Before we went to our commercial break, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to think about how do you maintain your emotional wellness? Because you had a lot of losses, became the single mother, 
took over a, a church. That's not what you had on your vision board, mm -hmm. but you still have a lot of companies, a lot of nonprofits. So you have a lot of balls that you're juggling. As the emotional wellness doctor, I always want to know, how do you maintain <laughs> your emotional wellness? One of the first things that I had the purpose to do was to set boundaries. Mm, good. In setting my boundaries, the most important thing that I feel that I do daily is I pray, That's I good. meditate, and I listen. Mm. What are you listening for? Because the audience is saying she listens. If she pray in a minute, what is she? What are you listening for? Well, let me put it this way. I like to always give an example. So many of us pray or have our time of yes. meditation. Yes. And that's really great. But when do we really stop to receive the download mm. or the marching orders yes. for our day? Yes. So I think it's vitally important that we learn how to be. Many of us don't slow down enough. That was the problem I had when I was in corporate America. And as I made the transition into every new level. Yes. I would not stop long enough to really process where I was and I was just burnt out all the time. Mm, I was overwhelmed. Okay. I was even sick for a period of time in corporate America wow. because I was so stressed out by the environment that I myself was also creating in the midst of being in a stressful environment. Absolutely. And so that space that we all need to create for ourselves, it doesn't have to be a long period of time. You just have to get proficient in what it is that you need. And that's what I found myself able to do right in the midst of chaos and okay. calamity and crisis and trauma and going through a very public situation. I learned how to just be present, to pray, take my mind off of everything, to meditate, and then to just be mm. and to listen. Today, I can't do everything, but what can I do? And that's vitally important. And if you look at most um, of those individuals that are at the top of their game, mm -hmm. you will find that they've had that time of reflection or yes. meditation yes. or quiet time that they cherish that's important to them. Even if it's a matter of just writing down your to-do list, you know, uh, setting the boundaries of, of, I don't answer my phone before 10 o'clock. Yes. In the morning. I just yeah. don't. Me, mine is nine. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> I, my phone goes off. Yes. I have several phones, but <laughs> yeah. yes. used to be one yes. goes off. Now I'm finding it in this space that both are going off. But um, I, they, they, they turn down about nine o'clock because oh, if not, I, I'm a workaholic. Yes. Professed. Yes. And so if I don't set those boundaries for myself, then I, I will be in overwhelm. I won't be able to come up with the strategies that I need. I won't be able to practice that self-care yes and it's important that when i'm in that time and in that space that i'm focusing and reflecting on exactly what it is that needs to be done for that day because the truth is our schedules can be very overwhelming yes. but i learned through this process that there were things that i just absolutely didn't need to engage in that i didn't need to do yeah. sometimes we're so busy we're just busy to be busy well, absolutely mm -hmm. and and you know you make a really great point because this whole, this whole, it's a disease to mm. me. Wow. A bu busyness mm -hmm. becomes a disease because first of all, most of the time people are busy, they're not being productive. They're just mm -hmm. busy. Mm -hmm. As well as a lot of people have nervous energy. Yeah. Because they don't ever take time to sit with themselves mm -hmm. and know themselves and feel comfortable with themselves. They feel it with things, they feel it with, with stuff. And, and so I have found that it just seems like in our society, particularly mm -hmm. with women, because we do wear so many hats, that you hear everybody talking about how busy they are all the time. And I'm like, why, why is this your life when you get to create it how you want to? So when you talk about that, and sitting still and listening and being mm -hmm. quiet and the meditation. And now everybody's into self-care, it's a trend. Well, to me, we tend to go to extremes. Yes. Every trend that comes about. Absolutely. And just sitting here, listening to you talk about how busy we are. You're right, we are super busy. Everybody's talking about how busy they are. But even in our business, if we're not effective, if we're not productive, yes. our business has to coincide with our purpose. Yes. Our business has to 
impact what it is that we're called to do. Right. And if it doesn't, it may not be necessary. It may be a time for you to say, no, I'm not gonna be able to do that. One of the greatest things probably in the last 10 years, more so the five years, I've gotten real good in the last two years, <laughs> I've been working on this a long time <laughs> that I've learned how to do is say no. no. Yes. You know what? So many people, that's another disease. <laughs> people don't know how to say no. Okay. <laughs> I learned that very effectively mm -hmm. a long time ago because I am that person. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a D. I'm a driver. Mm -hmm. So I am a leader. So it's real easy for me to say, no, I'm not doing it. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You know, um, but a lot of people mm -hmm. don't. And they don't set those boundaries. They don't have this, you know, we talk about it's really real to have real balance in your life. It's always going to be that you're doing something yeah. more than other. Everything yeah. is seasonal. You know, yeah. let, me, let me help with this whole life balance yeah. issue because I, I freed myself. And, and as a keynote, I helped to free other people yes. Yes. from this as well. You know, if you look at the scales, what do we spend our life trying to do? Get them balanced. Yes. And if we take note of our own life, as soon as we get it balanced, it teeters out of balance. Yeah, it does. So rather than look at life as trying to be balanced, look at it as being transformational. Yes. Look at it as being transitional. We transition just like seasons right. through our lives in the same way. And that kind of relieves some of the pressure because if I'm running around trying to balance my life the whole time and I can't yeah. get it balanced and yeah. then this is out of balance, you have to be aware of the season that you are in. There are times, even once I appreciated being home with my children, mm -hmm. that I realized they needed me during different seasons, yes, yes. more so than they needed in other seasons, yes. which gave me plenty of time to focus on some of the other things that I desired to do. Absolutely. And what we don't want to do is sacrifice anything that's important to us, but we can give it the right attention if we'll just make the proper transition, right. if we that's just good. will be more open to transforming our life at the moment and be present in the moment for what the need is. When I became a single mom, that was a huge transition in my life. Yes. I was having to show up to games and activities and I was told <laughs> like, the morning of, hey mom, um, we need cookies or hey mom, we need dinner yes. for the football team today. And I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna do all of this? I learned that I had a great village around me that mm -hmm. I relied upon to help me. Um, sometimes I would just have to call and say, hey, is there another option or can I move to another day? That's what I'm talking about being transformational, where you take things, look at them and assess them for what you can and cannot give. Because if not, you spend all your life trying to find this balance that does not exist. It doesn't, doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. it's, it's seasonal. So that was good. I'm going to ask you, what is one thing that you would tell people to avoid? Drama. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Women, <laughs> women, and the men are saying, no, some of those men out there can be full of drama mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, but this is not the show. To Don't ignore the, men and women. the flag. Yeah. Don't ignore the signs. You say, <laughs> avoid drama. Can you put that in perspective and how that affects your power moves? Well, what it does is it, it minimizes your power. If you're yes. constantly distracted, maybe I should have said distractions. Maybe that's a better word. No, no. <laughs> Look, I like how she's doing all of these D's, drama, distraction, T's, transformation, and transition. You playing with these with these letters. I, I love it. Look, that's why you a 24 karat speaker, ladies and gentlemen. 24 karat. Anyway, okay, go ahead. So the, the, the drama creates the distractions. Yes. Which really leads to, since we're there, our inability to effectively move forward and then we feel drained. And so when we walk into these toxic environments, we typically can identify the red flags, but we tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. That's right, how we're right. created. We want to believe the best in people. But as Maya Some Angelou <laughs> says, when people show you who they are, <laughs> they listen, are believe listen, them. Listen, I just had something going on this past week and I said, I believe you. You show me, I believe yeah. you. You don't have to tell me twice. Yeah. Yeah, I but a lot that. of times we force people like, no, 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 we want you to really yes, come yes. along. Yeah. And if, if it's draining, if it leaves you depleted, then you need to ask yourself in your quiet time and the time, you know, how is this benefiting me? 
Because if it's not benefiting you, if it's not bringing about the desired results, yes. then perhaps it might be something that you don't need to do or someone you don't need to connect to wow. because the drama and the toxicity, a good sign that people can start assessing right now in this moment is how do I feel when I leave their presence? How do I oh, feel absolutely. when I leave that company? How do I feel when I finish that project? There are mm. people that are working on projects right now. They're not really supposed to be doing those projects, but because everybody else is doing it, yeah, they're doing they're the doing same it. thing. Yes. But if you feel drained and depleted and just worn out. Okay, now you added another D. I'm trying to keep this. <laughs> okay, so the drama leads to distractions which then is going to drain you, mm -hmm. which is going to deplete you. Do you see how, do you, you didn't even know you were doing that, did you? <laughs> drama, <laughs> distractions, draining you. Okay, so stay away from the drama. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing people should do? I think people should, again, find the time in the day to take a few moments just to appreciate life as it is. Mm, yes. Life is precious. And I think we've learned that yes. more so in these last numbers of years. Yeah. Appreciate everything that you've been given. Stop, smell the roses, breathe. Find somewhere in your day. I don't care if it's sitting in the car. Yes. I sit in my car all the time. I, I literally would just sit like, mom, you're in the driveway. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, the, ha I'm having yeah. a moment because we need to be present and we yes. need to just be so an attitude of gratitude, yes. that appreciation, that gratefulness that, you know what, today was a day that was not promised. I made it. I'm here. I'm going to use it to the best of my ability. I'm grateful. Gratitude. That's good. Gets you into a really good, healthy space. Oh, and it does. And, you know, I can remember when I became a single mother and lost a lot of stuff as well. Um, I had to shift my thinking mm -hmm. and I had to focus on the things I did have and not what I didn't. Yeah. Focus on what you have and not what you don't. I'm gonna tell you because when you lose a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and you envision your vision or you were mm -hmm. there and now you don't have it and right. your vision exactly. was always that you would be there. Yeah. It's easy. People do focus on losses. They focus on um, failures. They focus mm -hmm. on all of the negative. Yeah. And I had to reframe my mind to always focus on what I have mm -hmm. and not what I don't. Yeah. So it made what I didn't have small mm -hmm. and what I did have large. People usually do the opposite. They make what they don't have large mm -hmm. right. and what they do have small. Yeah, they, 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 they major on the minor. Absolutely, it, yeah. 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 Minor on the majors, right. yeah. yeah. And, and so learning how to do that mm -hmm. was very helpful. So the mm -hmm. gratitude. Our time just moves so fast <laughs> in all of these great, great, powerful conversations. But I have to ask you, what is your next? You've written, tell everybody how many books you actually have. And I don't know if that's going to be your next and how many courses, but tell everybody how much information and transforming uh, materials that you have. I'm a big writer, have been for years, and I've penned nine books and wow. then I have five with other authors okay. as well. Okay. But I recently, in my discovery time, realized that I'm really here to be able to, to be selfless and to give back to people. And so I started reframing how that looked. And the word that has been given, actually two words, one is transformation and the other is empower. Okay. And so I am working on numerous projects that are going to transform and empower those that are ready, who are willing to make the choice. And so that is going to be in media okay, in many okay. different ways. Okay, okay. So I'm super excited about that. But also, you know, just in taking the stage, bringing people, you know, as a team, as a company into the marketplace, you know, really helping to undergird that. Uh, 
got another M. I'll keep that one kind of under my okay my hat right now. But uh, listen, but, I know but media is going to be a big part yeah. of what's next for me. <laughs> when I ask the guest, some people say, and they know, and other people say, I can't tell you. I'm like, well, you got to promise you're going to come back on the show and tell us what the next well, is. Well, you, you know what? I will do that because I'm so, and I've used this tagline for 30 years. I'm passionate about empowerment. Mm. And my thing is, is that if I can do something every single day to give someone hope, to cause someone to want to transform into who it is that they were created to be, then any medium that I can use, whether it's book, media, podcast, yes. social media, movies, yeah, uh, you know, uh -huh. it, it's, it's, it's exciting. I picked up some of that stuff in there. <laughs> Listen, audience, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going to uh, spoil the secrets. <laughs> this has been just incredible. It's wonderful. Thank you. I mean, to see all of the things that you're doing, to see what's next even. I mean, you say, well, this, with this long resume, maybe it's time to retire, but no, when, when God calls you to do something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, then you're gonna keep working. You know, retirement is a perspective. Yes. I wanna leave this earth depleted. Yes. Knowing yeah. that I have accomplished and impacted every single person that I was intended to. And see, that's why we kindred sisters, mm -hmm. because we, we have so much of the same mindset. I tell people I'm a rest when I die. Right. Resting is not plenty of rest. <laughs> Listen, no, I do get my sleep now. Yeah. I, you got to get sleep, but, but, you know, I'm here for mm -hmm. a purpose, and I know what that is. So I'm. I tell people I'm gonna be on stage, 90 years old. Yes, and I remember. <laughs> but I'm still gonna yeah. be doing as long as mm -hmm. I can speak and as mm -hmm. long as I can talk. Yeah. And that's what makes all of this so powerful and so great. Mm -hmm. And I want to just thank you again for being our guest. Well, thank you for having and me. And loving my dear, wonderful friend. And as well, again, 24 karat speaker who is out there changing lives and a premium speaker that I can help people get you on stage so you can do some transformation. Well, thank you. Thank you for entrusting in yes. me the gift that's been yes. given. Yes, you are just, and, and you don't look anything like what you've been through. So God is definitely good. Yeah. And, that, and that's the key. That's the key. Yes. Not looking like not what you've been like through. Not looking like what you've been through. Yeah. Coming out, not smelling like smoke. A absolutely. <laughs> and there you go. So I'm telling you again, another powerful episode. Share this, tell everybody about this TV show because we are changing lives and we are moving and motivating people to their greatness. What is your next move? What is your power move? Until the next time, this is Dr. Gladney. Have a powerful day. Thank you for joining us for today's Power Moves with Dr. Gladney. For more information or to contact Dr. Gladney, go to www.drgladney.com or to hire a 24 karat speaker, go to www.24caratspeakers.com. We'll see you next time.